See? So there is excruciating poverty that is concentrated among the African people. And when they see the Indian worker and they see the Indian just across the road are the Indian houses. And what goes in their mind is that at least the whites conquered us. But why do these Indians have better conditions than us? While Indians like Ismail Mir, Ahmad Kathrada, Yusuf Kachalia have been in the vanguard of the ANC's struggles for liberation, there are a whole body of Indians who have been alienated from the blacks by the sheer lifestyles in which they find themselves. Witness the contrast in the Indian housing and that of the blacks on two sides of the same street. These contrasts were at the heart of the rioting when enraged Zulus invaded the Gandhi settlement in Phoenix in August 1985. Today the Phoenix settlement built by Gandhiji is virtually in ruins. And standing me here with me is Rodney Harbour, an architect who has been involved in the Phoenix settlement for a while, and I think he's looking after the restoration work if and when it comes about. Yes, could, you, could you tell us a little bit about Gandhiji's house where we are standing? Yes. Well, it's hard to believe that we're standing in what was once a classical Hindu garden with people trees. There was a big uh, coconut palm in the front there. And so I'm standing on this little triangle here where Gandhiji used to sleep at night, apparently. Uh, this was a veranda, and as we move through here, this was a schoolroom, and beyond that is where he lived most of the time with his shrine at that end. Yeah. used to work at this end, and then at the back we've got the kitchen, and a little library on the end there. An interesting story happened to that library shortly before the house was destroyed, where I found an old book and it had to my dear friend Karam Chan from Leo, obviously Leo Tolstoy, so that was the connection. And it was lying there in the dust? It was like, well, it was just before the house was destroyed. I don't know what, it must have got burnt, I think, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that all of this land still, the title deeds have Muhammad Das Karam Chand Gandhi on the title deeds. It's 100 acres of land. And as recently as four years ago, there were only 18 houses. And now there's 600 people for every hectare on the, uh, since the invasion onto this land. What is the reason? You were talking something about reasons for tensions between the blacks and the Indian community. Of course, right now where we are standing, you can see the sharp contrast that is existing. When you look far behind me, or right b below where we are standing, you are looking at the shacks. And way across where I am pointing, which is called the Phoenix area, that is um, where the Indians, so-called Indians, stay. There's a sharp difference when you look at them as to the structures. Look at that red-topped building. That's a school meant for Indian kids. And they've got all the facilities, recreational facilities, sports grounds, and their buildings. And you look, just fell down below, the old museum, which is used as an informal schooling, where children are learning under such subconducive um, in conditions for learning. Now, such contrast. And then, long in the past, you had prosperous business, Indian people, property owners. And there were a majority within, compared to, I'm sorry, compared to the local black business people. And one could imagine that that led to some envy and jealousy of the progress made by the Indians and not as blacks. 
one could guess again that that could also have got been a contributory factor to the tension. This whole thing was um, orchestrated by the government. They actually went to the community and told them that for as long as Indian people live in Inanda, that the African people in Inanda would not get facilities, basic amenities like water, road, sanitation, you know, schools and so on. That it's only after the Indian people leave that area will all those facilities be available to the African people. There is definite evidence to show that the authorities did go to Inanda. These are the remains of the printing press that Mahatma Gandhi used to print his newspaper, The Indian Opinion. The press was founded in 1903 and it was in the other building which was destroyed, looted and in fact it was a victim of arson in August, in the rioting in August 1985. After that, the remains were brought to this area which was once the Gandhi Museum. There is no electricity here and in this dark hall, five classrooms are run on a voluntary basis where black children are imparted education by five different teachers. Mahatma Gandhi, who had been in South Africa to assist in a legal case, saw what was happening and informed his compatriots of what rights were being taken away from them. And it was on the eve of his departure that the people of Natal requested him to remain in South Africa and fight that case. The result was the Natal Indian Congress, the subsequent struggles, representations that were made by Mahatma Gandhi, which is well known throughout the world. And the Indian people are participating very fully in our struggle. You must remember that uh, they have produced a man like Mr. Ahmed Kathrada, who was sentenced together with me, and uh, we served uh, together from 1964 until they were released uh, last year. And uh, he is a man, you know, with remarkable qualities and who is playing a very decisive role in the course of our struggle. Why must there be a Natal Indian Congress and a Transvaal Indian Congress? When are you going to merge and become blend with the whole movement as such? Well, there is a general tendency now to, uh, to, 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 to have one organization. But we must also remember that, that a Natal Indian Congress was formed in 1894. Transvaal Indian Congress in the 1920s, they have got a long history, they had a sp special role. It's not just a matter of overnight dissolving and, and joining the, the ANC. Uh, whatever is done will have to be done in consultation with the membership. And once the mandate is given, uh, I am quite sure that it will happen. I would like to see them merged and the, uh, the name uh, sooner or later disappear so that we no longer say that, well, we as Indians are members of the African Congress. We as people of South Africa, wherever we are living, we are members of the African Congress. But there are other leaders like Raj Bansi who have collaborated with the racist regime. Mr. Raj Bansi, why are you the most controversial Indian in South Africa? Well, because I think the politics of South Africa is controversial. One has to have an aggressive style. Uh, in a very complex society, a uh, society that is riddled with apartheid, discrimination, injustice. Uh, if you don't uh, adopt a very strong attitude, they call me the Bengal tiger of South African politics. Uh, if you don't adopt these attitudes, if you don't confront people, whether you use, use a system or not, uh, then you cannot get your results. People who were opposed to the tricameral system are now going to lead the negotiations of all the black coalition, which means Indians, blacks, colors, the whole lot. And they are going to negotiate with the clerk. You, meanwhile, are already sitting on the, on the tricameral bandwagon. Don't you find yourself marginal? No, I don't agree with that. If you look at the statement made by the state president in, in 1984, he made it very, very clear, and I made it clear at a meeting with the Prime Minister in 1983. 
according to Gandhian strategy, we are not accepting the Tricam constitution. We are merely using it. One must look at the rigid apartheid system in this country where the whites have stated, have vowed, that as long as they are here, parliament will remain pure white, as white as milk. We got the door opened. I've always advocated that the future of Indians in this country is dependent whether they accept Pandit Nehru's advice given in Lusaka when Pandit Nehru came here, that we must regard ourselves as part and parcel of the African struggle. So this is the Indian predicament. They came here as laborers and some as traders. Over the years, they have prospered way beyond the black African average. There are only 1.2 million Indians in South Africa and over 26 million blacks. The memories of Indians are faint about their homeland. Why is your name Cookie? Uh, that's my nickname. My dad kept that name for me. <laughs> and what is your real name? My name is Kumaras and Dorsami. Where in India did your family come from? In South India. Maybe. South India. You don't know where exactly? Oh, no. Where, where are you from? I'm from Lanesia. You're from Lanesia? No, but yeah. uh, what, which part of the country is your father from? In India. Yes? Kandevi. Kandevi. Where's that? Somewhere around India. <laughs> it devolves on the leadership of the ANC, particularly its Indian component, to mobilize not only the Indian labor involved in the trade union movement, but the burgeoning and thriving Indian middle class into the political process. So that in the rapidly changing South Africa, Indians and the blacks are on the same side. They will have to resist racist machinations to keep them divided.